The Commands tab is the initial tab shown inside of Bajajir app. It contains a list of commands that underneath execute various ADB commands and shell commands on your target Android device. Let's briefly review what these quote-unquote built-in commands do. The first command called connect through Wi-Fi tries to enable wireless connection to your target device on port 5555. USB connection can be less reliable when you need to move your device around. Switching to wireless can help you in these situations. Some devices, like for example Android TV, already listen for wireless connection on the mention port. But most devices first need to be configured before you can connect on this port wirelessly. Underneath this command executes IDB. TCP IP 5555, then it tries to query the IP address of your target device and executes a DB connect using the IP address it found. On some devices, there can be some unpredictable delays before the connection succeeds. So if final connection is not successful, just try to connect wirelessly manually. The command disable developer options does exactly what it says. After executing this command, the developer options will disappear from settings on your target. If you need to access developer options again, you'll need to re-enable them, usually by tapping multiple times on build number, located somewhere in settings. Next command disables automatic rotation. This means that your device won't flip the screen to horizontal or portrait orientation when you rotate it. This is what you usually want, for example, on your watch. You can re-enable automatic rotation with the next command. Assuming your device is connected to Wi-Fi, the next command will give you its IP address. You can then use this IP address to connect to your device wirelessly. As mentioned before, your target device first needs to be configured to accept wireless connection. Only then, you'll be able to connect to it wirelessly with Bugjager. The next command tries to stop all running apps. This obviously won't stop any privileged system processes. Only regular apps. So it's safe. It's a quick way to free memory. You can then restart your apps at any time. Underneath, Bugjager execute a DB shell. AM kill hyphen all. The next command stops the app that is currently shown in foreground. Next command lists all target devices connected to your host device. Your host device is the one running Bugjigger. It's same as executing ADB devices. Next one lists all permissions on device. These permissions are then used by apps to get access to various resources provided by the system. Like for example access to files, photos or contacts. The next one lists many shell commands. It lists the executables available in slash system slash bin. You can use these in your custom user-defined commands or in interactive shell. I'll describe this functionality later. Power off command obviously powers off the target device. Next commands pulls down and collapses the system status bar. The next command reboots your target device to boot loader mode. Bootloader mode allows you to, for example, flash custom ROM or recovery partitions. You can also perform regular reboot with the next command. The next two commands allow you to force specific screen orientation. The rotate screen command just flips rotation to either landscape or portrait, depending on what is configured currently. Screen share command starts screen mirroring. With this functionality, you are able to see the screen of your target device inside of Bugjager, and you are able to control it with touch gestures. This functionality is also available from the Screen Cup tab. The next command can affect the refresh rate of your Oculus VR headset. Underneath set a system property with the set prop shell command. The next command navigates to developer settings in the target. Next one shows the activity of the app that is currently visible in the target. Activity is a crucial Android application component that holds the app's user interface. The commands for showing global, secure and system settings. These will give you a list of key value pairs with Android settings. Here you can see various settings that are accessible through the Android settings screen. You can use these key value pairs to change various settings from a custom command or from interactive shell. I'll show how to create custom commands and how to use interactive shell later in this video. Just note that you can change these settings with the settings shell command. For example, to enable automatic rotation, you could use a custom shell command settings put system accelerometer rotation one. The Show location data. Extract various information about the location, including last GPS coordinates. In case you find some of these commands not very useful, you have the option to hide them so they don't appear in the list. You can then make them visible again in Bugjager settings. You can also pin the commands that you use often so they appear on top of the list.
Bug Jigger offers the option to create your own command, which will be executed on the shell on your target device. To create your custom command, tap on the plus button in top toolbar. Note that the buttons in top toolbar are context sensitive. If you are currently at the commands tab, the plus button allows you to create a custom command. But if you switch to, for example, the packages tab, the plus button will have a different functionality. Now fill in the command name. Then enter your shell command. The command that you enter should not be prefixed with a db or a db shell. This is implicit, and your commands are already executed on through shell on the target device. You also have the option to select an executable file. This file can be a binary executable or a regular shell script file. Bugjigger will push the file to the target device, change its permission to executable, and run it as a regular executable file on the shell. Another option to execute the shell commands is through the interactive shell. Here you just type in your shell commands, like you're used to do on your PC or laptop. Note that these commands are executed on the target device. That means you need to use shell commands that are available on your target. And there can be some restrictions on which parts of the file system you can access. In general, for write and execute access, slash data slash local slash TMP should be available on the target. That's it for now. In future videos, I'll try to go through the other functionality that Bugjigger is offering. There's still a lot to cover. Thanks for watching.